We were talking the other day about older buildings in Casper that have been renovated and given a second chance at a useful life. And I found even more buildings to talk about. Some I could find a lot of information and some very little. It's really interesting to me which buildings are considered historical and which are not. So if you are wondering what history the various buildings throughout our town hold, Stay tuned and find out. Hi, I'm Alicia Collins with Remax The Group and the Alicia Collins Real Estate Team. And I've said before, residential real estate is my specialty. But today, let's talk about some historic real estate. We hope you love our videos. If you would like to hear more about why we love Casper, please hit subscribe and the bell so you're notified. Casper may not be as old as cities on the East Coast or Europe, but we do have several buildings that are almost as old as our town itself. One example is the Townsend Hotel, built during one of the first of several oil booms in the region. The original hotel was built in 1923, a testament to the luxurious style of the Roaring Twenties. The hotel was a hot spot for music, business, and society in the 20s and beyond. If you wanted fine dining and dancing, the Townsend was your destination for a good time in grand style. The hotel was also the hub for business meetings, including hosting the Rotary Club. Advertisements boasted the hotel was just as grand as anything you would find in Denver, including a billiards room that was considered to be the best in the region. Did you know it was known as the Fireproof Hotel? I didn't. Due to its all concrete structure, it earned the nickname as the Fireproof Hotel. Although the building was constructed out of concrete, the exterior was a facade of brick and cast stone, creating an impressive appearance in spite of the solid construction. The marble that adorned the walls, floor, and even the staircase to the second floor made for a luxurious lobby area. With 135 rooms, all of which had exterior walls and windows, some even boasting their own bathrooms, which was a definite sign of luxury when the hotel was constructed. The five-story hotel was one of three large hotels that were part of the core of downtown Casper. Now, it is the only one left standing. The Townsend Hotel was definitely the place to be in the 20s and beyond. While Casper experienced the boom and bust cycle of the energy sector, the hotel followed along over time, falling in disrepair. In the 1970s, the hotel was still in use, but no longer as the hub for business and social life of the area, but rather more for transients and low income use. Some even called it the flop house. It was a pretty far decline for the Grand Hotel, and the structure was closed in 1982. Only after it was closed did this once prominent building earn a spot on the National Registry of Historic Places. Many years and several ownership changes later, the Townsend landed in the hands of the Townsend Properties LLC in 2002, a group looking to revive the once vibrant building for use once again. Extensive gutting in 2006 cleared the unusable and unsafe features of the hotel, leaving the concrete shell and the marble lobby for use in the new capacity. The government of Natrona County bought the building in 2007 with the ultimate reuse plan in place. The Townsend Hotel would become the Townsend Justice Center, our new courthouse, which opened in 2009. What a history the building holds. Grand Hotel to Hall of Justice, with a flop house along the way. Almost 100 years of history, and the Townsend is once again an essential part of downtown Casper. Also from the Roaring Twenties in Casper, the Yellowstone Garage is another building that, like the Townsend, has been completely renovated for a use far and beyond what it was originally intended. The name conveys the history rather than the current use of the building, if you aren't from around here. You would not know that the Yellowstone Garage is not only a hub of music and entertainment in downtown Casper, specifically the old Yellowstone end of downtown, but it is also a restaurant and bar. Definitely not what the name says. The name, however, pays homage to the history of the building, which was originally a car dealership, filling station, and mechanics garage. The building was constructed in the 1920s as a full service car dealership named Chopping Motors. Many people around here know the building as Trippany Motors Building. Trippany Motors operated as a car dealership selling a variety of big brand cars in the 1950s. 
After years of showing and selling cars, the building then went through several different uses in the 80s, including a thrift store, a motorcycle shop, and even a machine shop. When the current owner, John Huff, bought the building, he was originally going to use it as a kind of car museum to show off his own collection and host other car-related events. The careful and creative renovation kept some of the original features of the building and expanded upon the unique curves and windows. I don't know about you, but I am glad that he didn't just stick to the original plan and just have a showcase building for cars. I enjoy cars as much as the next person, but summers sure would be a little less entertaining without Rock the Block, the weekly free family fun musical event hosted by the Yellowstone Garage throughout the summer instead of just showcasing cars. The Yellowstone Garage became an event venue. After a few years, they added a liquor license and opened a bar and a restaurant. Now, in addition to being one of the cool, renovated old buildings in town, the Yellowstone Garage is one of the great restaurants and event options in Casper. From garage to restaurant, what a transformation. Staying downtown, there is another bar and restaurant that has given an old building new life, the Gaslight Social. There wasn't quite as much information on what this building used to be, but I did find some interesting information on painted bricks of casperwi.com. According to them, the building was originally the American nuclear building. I wonder if that means it was bombproof. At some point in time, it was a plumbing supply company. After striking out on traditional research, I did an informational Facebook poll, and according to the memories of patrons from our city, the building has been so very many things. Apparently, like the Yellowstone Garage, the building also used to be a car dealership, the Plymouth Center, and many years later, a Harley Davidson dealership. I think one of the coolest things the Facebook answers turned up is that at one point in time, the auto shop class from NCHS used the upstairs of the building, had its own history, and went through a variety of businesses as well, including a computer repair shop, an army surplus store, and even apartments. So, possible office building, car and motorcycle dealerships, plumbing supply, apartments, and now one of the busiest bars in town. The building is also from the 1920s, so it's kind of ironic that the building from the Prohibition era is now a bar. The Gaslight Social has a semi-industrial, open-style interior with concrete and brick pillars. With a separate gaming area, outdoor seating, complete with cornhole boards and even billiards, the Gaslight Social definitely embodies the social in the name. While there are several bar options in downtown Casper, the Gaslight Social offers patrons a completely different look and feel, giving downtown Casper another option for lunch with friends or a night out. Three buildings, all from the 1920s, a hotel turned Hall of Justice, a garage that became a restaurant, bar and event venue, and the American Nuclear Building that is now a popular hangout. All three with very different beginnings, but one thing in common, incredible renovation resulting in new businesses to enjoy right here in Casper. If you would love to know more about Casper, you might like this video or this one. We hope to hear from you soon. Have a great day.